You boys look like a weird heavy metal band. <laughs> yes, we are a band. Really? Yeah. So what do you play? Symphonic, post-apocalyptic, reindeer-grinding, Christ-abusing, extreme war, pagan, fennoscandic metal. Right. Really interesting. <laughs> What up, everyone? DJ Nubis here with your Metal Time Radio podcast, doing another Species Spotlight. This time, doing the Salmopeus Armenia, also known as the Venezuelan Sun Tiger, my favorite. Had always wanted one, finally got one a while back. Uh, this is arboreal species, uh, so obviously in this series, obviously I'm going to spotlight all my tarantulas. Got to put that out there so you don't know what you know what I'm doing with this particular series is what I'm trying to say. But uh, this species of spider tarantula is from Venezuela, North Guana, um, North Brazil, as well as uh, Parciama, which I'm not really sure where that is. Probably still in Brazil somewhere, I'm assuming. Or South America, excuse me. Um, anywho, um, as far as experience level, so... Most beginner spiders uh, are where you start, so because you're either dealing with like temperament, uh, venom. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the beginner spiders, like most uh, non venomous, are basically new world, so they have ear canine hairs where they'll kick hairs at you. Now, the sun tiger is a new world, but it's the only one that doesn't kick hairs, but they because it is, and uh, it's like that go between between new and old world so the spider itself is has some pretty strong venom um for being a new world uh but it doesn't kick hairs but it's again it's you know it, it's all about uh how you manage to deal with them as you have them in the hobby and how you feed them clean the water dishes all that kind of stuff so it's just about respect for the species and spiders in general. Because I told you before in my last video, even with more uh, docile species like the Brazilian black or the curly hair or even the striped knee, they don't possess strong venom, but they're big enough uh, where the fangs could hurt you. Like It's called tagging because spiders will rear up and they kind of almost like a snake almost. Uh so even though you may not get sick from those species, like their fangs are big enough that it hurt. Like, so it's about respect, knowing, seeing the signs of how they're behaving and all that good stuff. Um, mine that I have, I call her Mithra and uh, there she is there. And so obviously I named her after the goddess of many arms and stuff like that. I, you know, I, I kind of forget the full definition, but uh, you can see here she's got like the tiger stripes and then the sunburst on her legs, uh, the little lines there. I have a video too that I'm going to show you of her later walking around. But I have a quick little video here from the Tarantula Collective, a group I follow uh, both on Facebook and on YouTube. And he's going to break down a lot about the species, some of the stuff that I've said to you just now. So here you go. We're going to go and check out... Um, Tarantula Collective explaining the Salmopeus Armenia. Salmopeus Armenia, commonly known as a Venezuelan sun tiger, is a New World arboreal tarantula first described in 1994 by F. Sager. This tree-dwelling tarantula has a deep black color with bright orange chevrons on the legs and a tiger stripe pattern on the abdomen. This species is indigenous to the area of Venezuela and Guyana, but was also observed in 2016 in Brazil. Unlike most New World tarantulas, this species does not have urticating hairs, but makes up for its lack of defense mechanism by being very fast and agile and having a venom stronger than most New World species. 
The Venezuelan sun tiger is sexually dimorphic, meaning you can tell the females and males apart by their appearance. Males of this species are smaller than the females and have a grayish brown color instead of the deep black coloration of the mature females. These teas are fast growing and once mature, females are generally around five to six inches while males are usually around four to five inches. Females typically produce only about 50 to 200 eggs per sack, but they are able to double clutch, which means they can drop a second sack after a molt without having to mate again. Of all the teas in this genus, the Arminia is the most defensive in my experience. They are very fast and will teleport from one side of the enclosure to the other before I can even react. That coupled with the fact that their venom is stronger than almost every other New World, this isn't the best beginner tarantula, but makes an excellent species for anyone with some experience with New World tarantulas to begin to make their transition to keeping Old World tarantulas. I find that if you provide ample places for your sun tiger to hide and feel secure, they are more likely to retreat out of sight than to give you a threat pose. And I usually tap on the glass a few times before opening their enclosure to give them time to retreat and hide, as opposed to just opening it up and startling them. Reports online state that their venom has reactions like vomiting, sweating, lightheadedness, and muscle spasms that last for a couple of days. Again, a bite is something you really don't have to worry about if you have a proper setup, you warn the tarantula before you cross into its space, and you use tongs to drop in feeders or remove the water dish. As long as you are mindful and respect the tea's space, there is little to no chance of a bite. Yeah, so there you go. Um, a bit of information on the Venezuelan sun tiger. Uh, yeah, so in my enclosure, which I'll show you in a minute, uh, it's actually a pretty big one for an arboreal. Like she doesn't technically need that much space, but when it comes to the more, you know, spiders that have a little bit more aggressiveness or more defensiveness, I don't want to say aggressive because they're really not aggressive. Uh, the only ones, uh, like my OBT when it's smaller now, but once it gets a little bit bigger, it, even at its age right now, it's like this big, but it still gets very defensive whenever I, you know, try to give it food or water. It just, it, right now it's hiding under its log, but same with the sun tiger. So when I'm, if I like try to like check on it through its webbing and the little tunnel, uh, if she's close enough, she rears up, like she gets in a defensive posture. And it doesn't mean that she wants to bite, but she will, she has to. But uh, I've given her enough space in my enclosure to where she has room to grow. Cause like she will never have to be moved. Uh, once I moved her before she's fine. Uh, it wasn't actually a, a problem. Like she, at first, like she was so fast, like I didn't even know she ran in and the way we were doing it between Neko and I. We had a video on it a while back. Wasn't sure like if she got in there or not, but she did. And so like that's the thing, like you have to be careful, mindful of what they're doing, uh, have a plan in place. Like I've even when I moved my um ornamental uh not too long ago, I used a new method with a basically a plastic coke bottle that's cut in half with a cap on the back with a hole in it so i can put her in it and then transfer her over and then just stick like a straw or something in and she'll you know run out and that's what she did when i put her in her new enclosure uh but eventually she'll get as big as the sun tiger and i'll have to probably move her again to a bigger uh arboreal type enclosure maybe something like what mithra has it's just i'm gonna need more room for shit like that but point is is that i definitely give to spiders that are a bit more risque in terms of venom and like defensiveness more space now granted my brazilian black which is docile technically i could hold it uh but she's you know she's one of those spiders that whenever i open the door she thinks it's food time so while she's not getting in a defensive posture, uh, you know, if I were to start messing with her, she may get mad. So, like, you know, spiders are very temperamental, just like any other kind of animal. Uh, so you have to be very careful even with the ones that aren't venomous. Like, she's the one that 
got your can of hairs on me and I was itching for a fucking month. So, and I told you the last time, like, you don't want the hairs in your eyes. Like, whenever you're dealing with spiders that kick hairs, wear glasses or, or goggles or something because uh, you may have to go to the hospital if it gets in your eye because you can't get it out. Like, it's really, it's almost like little barbs that just get into your eye and your skin. And if it gets on your skin, wash right away. Don't do what I did and start scratching around because then I was itching for all over the place. It's really bad. <laughs> so it was kind of a nightmare. But here is my uh, video of um, Mithra. And uh, it's kind of funny because I had the TV going on in the background. So it, it was something about trucks and DNA or something. But it just kind of like worked very well with the spider. But it's just kind of funny. But uh, here's Mithra and a little video I made of her. So, yeah, I, I got some video of her because she doesn't always come out. So, so when she does, I try to always get photos and video of her right away because most of the time she does spend time in her little cubby back in the corner, uh, which she's webbed up and keeps in there. A lot of times she has like this tunnel that kind of goes out by the water dish uh, whenever she needs water and stuff. So usually, I'll, like I dropped a roach in there the other day she ate. So... Uh, they eat dubia roaches, uh, crickets, large crickets. Uh, obviously, as they're smaller, they'll take like mealworms or small crickets and stuff like that. So very easy to they're very easy to manage. Most tarantulas are like I haven't had any issues with the species that I have. It's, it's can be a little nerve wracking because, uh, like I said, from my OBT, I had a larger OBT that I got some months back, but unfortunately, after about a month, it, it got impacted. Uh, and passed away so i was really bummed because it was a full-grown female and i was like oh, i don't have to worry about dealing too much with moving this one around but passed away so i got a juvenile and you know it's doing fine it's eating but once i get to a point i'm gonna have to move that one to another enclosure so i'm I just but i want to do the ones like i have the uh curly hair and my black brazilian and uh, with the double doors, like it's not a boreal, they're more of a uh, terrestrial species. So when I go to do that, um, it's, it's going to be, you know, something I have to watch out for because, like I said, they trying to get a spider to move into their new spaces is not always easy because if they're defensive, you know, usually you just kind of try to push them from behind just to kind of nudge them into so just kind of run in. Uh, but if they're a defensive spider, they will sometimes turn around and rear up on you. Even my skeleton leg, which is a new world, uh, when I first went to move her into the enclosure, she immediately turned around and reared up on me. So I was like, well, how the fuck am I going to get you in there? You're just acting like an asshole. I think I had to actually leave um, the the other container inside there, and I was just kind of pushing her out a little bit, and then she finally got out and went and hid. But uh it's it's crazy if you ever watch dave's little beasties like him trying to move spider sometimes they don't always cooperate they will run out run around his table he has to go and catch them and put them back in so and some of those species can be dangerous in terms of just you know making you sick so but he's very calm he's always saying stay calm you know be gentle and that's really the way to do it because you want to show them the respect that they have and then everything goes well so far i've been doing this for a couple of years now since i'm getting back into the hobby and uh it's going well you know i've had some pass away but most of them were males and you know just because males don't live generally that long and i don't do any breeding um so like even now with my my dwarf bluefoot uh baboon uh he's a male um but he's still going like he's you know he's still doing his thing now he wants to mate obviously that's because he's mature uh, but I don't do that. Like, I don't have the necessary knowledge or ability to do raising. Like, I've, you know, obviously I can build something like Dave has with his little humidifier or whatever that, that place is. He keeps his spiderlings in. But, you know, then again, I could make money, but it's, it's, I've got so much going on in my life that doing breeding isn't one of those options. Like, I could 
do it if I really felt comfortable doing it, but I'm just not at that stage. So right now it's more about, I've got 13 different species of tarantulas. I'm going to showcase them all at some point. And uh, I'm having fun just doing that. So the only thing I worry about is like Neko and I plan to move in a few months to another location in Delaware, uh, which is a couple hours away. And uh, so I'm going to have to transport them. So I'm going to have to gather them all up and then put them in little containers and then move them. Uh, so that's, I'm not looking forward to that too much because, you know, travel of any kind for a tarantula can be nerve wracking and stressful. So they could die along the way, which would suck. Um, so I don't want that. So I may try to keep them in their, in their enclosures. I may just try to like, you know, um, keep it from having a lot of vibration and turns and stuff. So I want to try to keep it because we'll have to use her Jeep to do that. Uh, but I'm going to try everything I can to make sure that there's not a lot of movement with the spiders so that they're not too disturbed while the, we're driving out there. So, yeah, there you have it. This is the Venezuelan sun tiger. It's my favorite species that I have, the one I've always wanted. Uh, Mithra is very beautiful. And uh, she's showing signs of uh, molting, but I want to get her fattened up some more. But she hasn't really been eating too much more. She did have that roach the other day. But the uh, thing is, it's kind of a stressful thing for tarantulas to molt because uh, they usually have to have a lot of food and water before they do it. And then once they get out, they got to go and uh, drink a lot of water and, and then it takes a few days before they can eat because their fangs aren't hardened up yet. Uh, so yeah, it, it's, it's, it's fun, but you know, it can be scary because you don't want your spires to pass away by undue circumstances. So anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you got any comments, do you have your own species of tarantula? Have you had this species before? Let me know what you thought of it. And uh, see you next time on the Metal Town Road Podcast. Go,